All right, I'll uh, we'll go ahead and start the meeting here. Uh, good morning, welcome everyone to the quarterly meeting of the Domestic Violence State Coordinating Council. Today is Friday, June 14th, and it's uh, approximately 10 a.m. And just as a reminder, all of our meetings are open to the public and they're recorded on the Tennessee Coalition's YouTube page. And we especially welcome all of our uh, returning members and new guests here uh, that are with us this morning. Uh, let's go ahead and have Secretary Fox call the roll. And just as a reminder, please unmute yourself to let her know uh, that you're here or present. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, everyone. Vice Chair Bean. Vice Chair. Here. Thank you. Here. Thank you. Council Member Concilio Young. Here. Thank you. Council Member Curtis, Chelsea Curtis. Council Member Curtis. Council Member Dalton. Here. Thank you, Judge Dalton. Council Member Davis, Derisha Davis. Here. Thank you, Council Member Davis. Council Member Sarah Davis will not be with us on this morning. She is on vacation. Council Member Farmer, Andrew Farmer. Council Member Farmer. Council Member Frog, Lena Frog. Here. Thank you, Council Member Frog. Chair is here, here with us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Council Member Jones, Sue Jones. Council Member Jones. Council Member McDevitt, Regina McDevitt. I'm here. Thank you, Council Member McDevitt. Council Member McMillan. Here. Thank you, sir. Council Member Miller, Stacy Miller. Council Member Miller, Stacy Miller. Present. Thank you, Council Member Miller. Council Member Parker, Ashley Parker. Here. Thank you, Council Member Parker. Council Member Reynolds, D. Reynolds. Council Member Reynolds. Council Member Reeves, Kendra Reeves. She had a conflict in schedule this morning. She will not be with us. Council Member Russell. Council Member Ray Russell. Council Member Scott. Council Member Jenny Scott. Here. Thank you, Council Member Scott. Council Member Tate. Here. Thank you, Council Member Tate. Council Member Van. Council Member Bobby Van. Council Member Wally. Council Member Paige Wally. Council Member Vess. Council Member Felix Vess. Thank you, Council Member Vess. Madam Chair, that concludes the official roll call of the council members. I do want to recognize that we do have a couple of guests on. If you are a guest, if you would please be so kind to put your information in the chat section, your name, your agency's name, as well as your email address. We will greatly appreciate it. And at this time, Madam Chair, we would like to recognize Takara Wilson. Uh, Takara Wilson is a staff member with the Tennessee Coalition to End Domestic and Sexual Violence. She is on with us this morning. Uh, Ms. Wilson, we appreciate you being with us on this morning and we all have an opportunity for you to introduce yourself officially uh, during the announcements. Madam Chair, that concludes the roll call for this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Fox. And do we have a quorum today? Okay, perfect. Yes, ma'am. We do have an established quorum. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so Secretary Fox had emailed the minutes from our last meeting on uh, June 3rd, uh, 2024. Are there any corrections at this time? Okay, if there are no corrections, then uh, the minutes are approved as distributed. And we're gonna go a little bit out of order today. Uh, we'll cover everything on the agenda, but we're gonna move committee reports up now. I'll go ahead and start with the executive uh, nominating uh, committee report. 
So uh, the executive committee, we met on Friday, May 10th at 1130, and we discussed the nominating election. The current executive committee agreed to remain in our current positions. Uh, Felix Vess had nominated himself to serve as assistant secretary and treasurer. Uh, secretary Fox, did you receive any other nominations at this time? No, I did not. Thank you. And does anyone present today, uh, are there any nominations from the floor? Okay, if there are no nominations at this time, uh, I'm gonna need a motion to approve the following slate of officers for the upcoming 2024, 2025 fiscal year. And that includes myself, Brooke Kupenthal as chair, uh, Melanie Dean as vice chair, Tina Fox as secretary and treasurer, and Felix Vess as assistant secretary and treasurer. So with that, um, do I hear a motion? Move that nomination cease and the uh, panel be accepted by acclamation. Thank you. And do I have a second? I second. second. Thank you very much. And uh, I believe we need to uh, take this to a vote, Secretary Fox, um, uh, now that it's been moved and properly seconded. Thank you, Madam Chair. Melanie Bean? Aye. Thank you. Council Member Castillo Young? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Council Member Dalton? Yes. Thank you. Council Member Davis, Louisha Davis? Yes. Thank you. Council Member Frog? Yes. Chair Hoopenthal? Uh, I guess I abstain, Thank but I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Council Member Sue Jones. Council Member Sue Jones has joined us. You may be muted, Sue. I probably need to be muted most of the time, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Council Member Jones. Council Member McDevitt? Yes. Thank you. Council Member McMillan? Yes. Thank you. Council Member Miller, Stacy Miller? Yes. Thank you. Council Member Parker. Yes. Thank you. Council Member Scott. Yes. Thank you. Council Member Tate. Yes. Thank you. And Council Member Vest needs to uh, abstain. So, Madam Chair, that concludes the official roll call for the slate of officers effective July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. Thanks so much, Secretary Fox. I appreciate it. And thank you all for uh, voting. Um, we're going to go ahead and move to committee reports next. Um, I'm going to move um, Michelle up to the top here, and she's going to present on the Emerging Issues and Orders of Protection Committee. Good morning, everyone. Thank you uh, for taking our committee up. Um, we met this morning uh, a little bit after 9 uh, to talk about the issues that we had on our agenda. And um, we went over the order of protection forms that um, the AOC houses and um, uh, creates and in conjunction with this um, committee and commission. And um, we determined that right now there are not uh, run any required changes pursuant to the um, public chapters that are, are in effect for this after this legislative session. However, we are still looking at a couple of um, of issues, and um, I'm going to distribute any proposed changes to the our committee prior to sending them out in July if we make any changes. Um, we we did approve one change back in March for adding a mandatory reporter to the order protection petition, so that will that will go on there. Um, but as far as the um, new laws that will be in effect for July. Right now, we don't see any changes. Um, I am still looking at the um, elder abuse um, 
public chapter that um, passed just to make sure we're not missing anything on that. Um, it's a it's a little bit complicated, so we're we're double checking that. Um, and, and I will also be um, double checking a few things with the DA's conference next week. So um, that that's really the update on the forms. Um, nothing major um, that needs to be uh, taken up by the full committee. So um, that's a good thing. And then we also discussed um, public chapter 1033, which is the GPS monitoring requirement um, for bail purposes for domestic violence abusers. And we did have a lengthy discussion on that um, as we did in the March meeting um, with concerns and just, um, just some unintended consequences that may occur because of that public chapter, particularly with cost um, that may have to be um, absorbed by the counties and um, and possibly the victims, but that's not clear in the bill. So hopefully that would, we know that that's not the intent. So um, we're just trying to make sure we hit all the different um, possible concerns with that so that we can talk with the legislative sponsors and uh, obviously our various stakeholders and all the counties. So I think there'll be more to come on that, um, but we did have a, a very good discussion on that and that will continue as that bill goes into effect July 1. Um, so that that's really it. That is our report um, for uh, this, this quarter. Thanks so much, Michelle. And does anyone on the floor have any questions for this committee? Yes, I do have a question, um, Michelle, please. Sure. We have had a request for training uh, on this new law, the GPS law. Um, what we need to know is, will uh, your committee and or the training committee uh, be available and or prepared to provide training uh, to the community, to stakeholders on the new law? I think that's a good question. Um, and it may depend on which groups, you know, are asking for the training on who may be the most appropriate to, to train them. Um, and, and we're all still trying to figure out obviously the ins and outs of it. Um, I had been at the judicial conference this past week and, you know, there were, there were several questions, you know, from the judges just on how this will actually be implemented, um, paid for, you know, used. I think that would be the same on the district attorney side um, as far as, you know, how they plan to implement it. So I, I think we may just need to have a further discussion on that once we know a little bit more about how this will actually be, you know, implemented in the various districts. Um, so maybe more maybe we just need to have a, another detailed conversation about that because I'm not sure if, you know, our committee or obviously the training committee ourselves would, um, you know, train on that, but we may be able to pull, you know, the various um, experts on that and um, come up with, you know, a training plan once we have a little bit better grasp on just how this is actually going to be used um, uh, in the various cases. Very good. Thank you very much. And I'll make sure that they uh, understand that. We have Becky Bullard on. I'm going to share before you leave. We do know that you have to leave. Becky is with the Office of Family Safety. And I know that on yesterday, um, she met with a victim who um, was who had an offender on the GPS from another state and she wanted to provide some input. So, Becky, do you mind sharing with us uh, any feedback from that meeting on yesterday, please? Sure. And I'm sorry about the technical difficulties, Tina, that you could <laughs> jump on. Um, it was a really great meeting. This is a woman who has experienced stalking by her ex-husband for several years. GPS monitoring was ordered at one point. They still have pending cases. Uh, and what has happened over the last several years that he's been on GPS monitoring is that he, I mean, he's obviously had a number of violations or continue to be a number of new charges. But one of the things that she really wanted to share with us is the burden on victims. And for her offender, he began paying. She was supposed to pay $3 a day. He was supposed to pay seven. And he began paying that and then became indigent six months later. And she, they were going to just remove the GPS monitoring 
And she said, no, I, I need the GPS monitoring so I can sleep at night, so I can feel like my kids are safe at their schools. So she took on that payment. The other problem that she found out when she took on that payment is he had actually not been paying his portion, his $7. And she ended up having to pay all of that back pay that he hadn't paid for those first six months of the GPS monitoring. So it's a huge burden to her. She's been paying over $300 a month just to have some peace of mind that um, he is not going to be around her. So it, even with the GPS monitoring, she said there were lots of benefits of it, just having some of that peace of mind. Uh, she's really worked with that company and kind of taught them how to be more trauma informed, which I think we're going to see a lot of the victims that we work with having that same kind of experience of, you know, working with people on the other end who really maybe don't understand all of the, the dynamics of interpersonal abuse. And one of the things that she mentioned was that when he did actually ping near her kid's school, which is an exclusion zone, it came to court, came in front of a judge here pretty recently, and the case was thrown out because the evidence itself, well, we can't say exactly why it was thrown out, but the general sense that we got from her and that we've gotten from the district attorney's office was that the judge didn't feel like they could fully rely on the data from the GPS monitoring and that there were so many data points. She said there was a stack of paper this large with all of the kind of ping information and it may have been how it was presented. It may be stereotypes about GPS monitoring. So I think that there, we have a lot of work to do around not only setting up the GPS monitoring, but how it actually is implemented and then is viewed within the courts. So it was a really, really great and interesting um, hour that she spent with us. And I think she'd be really willing to talk with any of us, to talk with other jurisdictions. She really wants to make sure that other victims who are experiencing this, who are interacting with GPS monitoring, have some information and know how to ask questions and feel really empowered in their interactions with GPS monitoring companies. I hope that's helpful. Thank you, Becky. Thank you very much. Yes. Sorry, Secretary Fox, uh, were you going to say something? Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I think all this information is very helpful. And we, we had a very productive meeting. And uh, as uh, we have more experts weighing in on the question, I think we'll have a better and more comprehensive understanding of the impact of this law. But um, we will keep you all posted on updates and how things proceed. Uh, thank you again, Michelle, for sharing. Uh, next, we're going to have the Certification and Monitoring Committee uh, uh, discuss a report uh, with Stacy Miller, who is our chair. They met earlier this morning in a Zoom meeting. Stacy, if you could go ahead and report on your meeting. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we have a um, short list of programs that need to be addressed today. One of them is Alternative Counseling Solutions. Uh, that is an LLC in Nashville serving Davidson County, Rutherford, and Williamson counties. They have submitted all necessary documents including their $200 payment for recertification. The committee reviewed their paperwork and we discussed their program again today. Uh, the program was virtually monitored on April 25th. Uh, Tina, I'm going to butcher her name, so I may need some help. Uh, Balakia Bargava, uh, she is with a, the coalition as a volunteer and Ms. Tina Fox. After discussion, the committee agreed uh, to recommend alternative counseling solutions for recertification. So I am requesting a motion uh, to recertify them. This is Lena Frog and I make that motion. Melanie Bean second. I apologize. I did not realize that I was on you. Um, it, <laughs> the motion, um, it's been moved and properly seconded. And with that, Secretary Fox, we are ready for a vote. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, all those who are in favor, uh, you can raise your hand and or say yes. 
Do you mind? I, I apologize just to make sure that we run through. And I know we have a number of people who are, um, uh, their image is not showing. Do you mind if we go ahead and run through? I know it's a little bit of a hassle, but um, <clears throat> I think it will help it run a little smoother. Yes, ma'am. No worries at all. I'm happy to. All right. Uh, Vice Chair Bean. Aye. Uh, Council Member Concilio Young. Aye. Council Member Dalton. Aye. Council Member Derisha Davis. Aye. Council Member Frog. Aye. Uh, Chair Hoopenthal. Aye. Council Member Jones. Aye. Council Member McDevitt. Aye. Council Member McMillan. Aye. Council Member Miller. Aye. Council Member Parker. Aye. Council Member Reynolds, D. Reynolds. Council Member Reynolds. Thought she was on. Council Member Scott. Aye. Thank you. Council Member Tate. Aye. Thank you. Council Member Vess. Aye. Very good. Madam Chair, that concludes the roll call for that particular vote. And with that, the uh, motion and the vote has been approved. All right, our next program is the Sheriff's Anti-Violence, uh, the Sheriff's Anti-Violent Effort Save in Nashville. Their service in Davidson County, they have submitted all necessary documents, including the $200 payment for recertification. The committee reviewed the paperwork and we discussed their program. The program was monitored on May 7th by Ms. Tina Fox. And after discussion, the committee agreed to recommend save for recertification. And we are requesting a motion for approval. Ms. Lena Frog and I make that motion. I second. And it's been moved and properly seconded. And with that, Secretary Fox, ready for a vote. Excuse me, ready for a vote. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Vice Chair Bean. Aye. Council Member Castillo Young. Aye. Council Member Dalton. Aye. Council Member Derisha Davis. Aye. Council Member Frog. Aye. Chair Hoopenthal. Aye. Council Member Jones. Aye. Council Member McDevitt? Aye. Council Member McMillan? Aye. Council Member Miller? Aye. Council Member Parker? Aye. Council Member Reynolds? Council Member D. Reynolds? Council Member Scott? Aye. Council Member Tate? Aye. And I believe. Uh... Councilmember Reynolds, she put in the chat that she's unable to get video, just as a note. Very good. Thank you very much, Councilmember Tate. And Councilmember Vess. Aye. Very good. Madam Chair, that concludes the official roll call for that particular vote. You're muted. With that, the motion is approved. Thank you. Um. Currently, we have a complaint on one program. It is a victim safety complaint that was uh, brought to us and brought to the attention by the Office of Family Safety in Nashville. Um, it was uh, reported to Ms. Secretary Fox, Tina, excuse me, Secretary Tina Fox, um, against a program in Nashville serving Davison County on March 1st, 2024. Um, Due to the investigation that the committee has, has began and um, due to the nature of the complaint, um, we do feel like this is go not going to be something that we can resolve immediately. We want to be very thorough and very diligent in our investigation, and we want to put the appropriate steps in place to make sure that victim safety is at the forefront, um, both um, as this complaint moves forward to make sure that we have done our due diligence and collaborated with the Office of Family Safety to make sure that that survivor remains confidential and protected. Um, but we do also want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence to make sure that um, 
our program is, uh, or our committee is doing um, everything that we can do to make sure that a successful resolution um, for the survivor and for the program uh, is met. Uh, we want to make sure that if there are some things that um, we find that we do an excellent job of making sure that we rectify that for future survivors. Um, we will have an update and a little bit more thorough detail uh, at our next meeting about that complaint. Um, the next after that would be our 2024 BIPS conference that we had last week. The BIPS annual conference was held in Nashville Thursday, June 6th and June 7th with the theme of Refresh, Renew, Recharge, the 21st Century BIPS. Uh, there was a total of eight presenters and seven presentations. Uh, Becky Bulliard with the Office of Family Safety did a phenomenal, phenomenal presentation on strangulation. Uh, I always love listening to Becky because she always brings new information, um, current trends, and uh, I learn something every time I listen to her. And so if you've not heard Becky present, you definitely definitely uh, need to get what her training schedule is. She does a great job. Um, we had Dr. Richard Schulberl and Becca um, Edwards with Hope for Justice, and they discussed human trafficking is domestic violence with our programs. Uh, I presented um, women victims, uh, excuse me, women victim versus offender. Uh, Ashley Cathy, another office from Family Safety presentation, the importance of, uh, importance of partnering with victim services according to the standards and rules. Uh, Ashley was a presenter last year. And again, she's one that the programs just keep asking for her to come back because she just does such an excellent job. Rebecca Bevins came and talked about the new DCS program, Caring Dads. Um, that is a new program that DCS is doing to hold um, uh, fathers more accountable in the juvenile system. And uh, Stacy Shrugs came and did a presentation um, from the Secretary of State's office on the Safe at Home program. And then again, we went over uh, the standards and rules um, and, and tried to go ahead and find some consistency in our program, we in, in our programs across the state. We had 46 participants each day, totaling 92 participants. Each received eight hours of training, and we had two council members, Lena Frog and myself, uh, that were there at the um, the conference. And again, it was just a great conference. Tina Fox and the planning committee did an absolute phenomenal job. We had some just absolutely um, great dialogue, great networking, and just great learning opportunity. And it was it was an overall just wonderful conference. And Madam Chair, that's all I have. Thank you so much, Stacy. We really appreciate all the work you're doing. And thanks to all of the council members who were uh, participants in the conference. Um, I appreciate and your Madam work. Chair, if I may, please, I do want to shout out uh, to Stacy and Lena both. Lena, um, was the hospitality chair unofficially. Um, she uh, made everything just run so smoothly. She helped out with registration, uh, set up, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then Stacy uh, and her organization, Tennessee Correctional Services West, um, they literally uh, aided in funding uh, the refreshments that we had. And as you all know, the council's grant does not fund food or beverages. Um, however, Stacy um, reached out and provided over more than over half of the monies that we used for snacks and refreshments and chocolate and more chocolate and more chocolate. So I just want to shout out to Stacy. And then on top of that, she facilitated two of those presentations. She was the only one that facilitated two presentations. And she is in the trenches um, every day doing this important work. Um, and so we just want to just shout out to both of them uh, for their work on the council as well as with the certification and monitoring committee. And then lastly, and this is my fault, so I did not include, but we did recognize uh, last week uh, the Wayne King Award. Wayne King was a program facilitator um, he was stellar at his work, uh, and so he passed away in December of last year. Um, he ran and managed the Intervention Academy out there in Scott County, out there in Lena's neck of the woods. Um, and so uh, we were concerned that the program was not going to be able to carry on. However, his wife um, has uh, intervened, and the program is up and running. And so uh, we did have a Wayne King Award. Uh, we had uh, initially... Uh, voted to give it to uh, one person. However, we had to renege on that, no fault of hers. 
um, other than she doesn't work with the agency in the moment. So we had to go with the run up. But I just want to say thank you to uh, Lena and Stacy both for the support that you all lended for this conference. Uh, we have changed the tone of the conference. It used to be uh, a bit straining, but now we have changed it to a conference style. And I just appreciate the work that both of you all did to aid us in making the conference a success. And Seema is on. She is one of our program directors out in Knox County. Um, she attended the conference as well. And uh, we just appreciate um, her as well. Thank you, uh, Madam Chief. Thanks so much, uh, Secretary Fox. We really appreciate um, your words. And uh, Stacy and Lena, thank you very much for all the work that you've uh, done for the council and on the BIPS conference. We are going to go ahead and move to the uh, training and education co-chairs, Alana Tate and Ashley Parker. Uh, do you all have a report to present to us today? Um, sure, I can go ahead and share my screen if you don't mind, Ashley. And you can go ahead. Sure. Um, let me get it pulled up here. Let's see. If I remember how to, there we go. If I remember how to do this. No. Share. No, not the whiteboard. I apologize. Let me go to the report here. It's a little different. I'm used to Teams. Um, Ashley? <laughs> Let's see. You guys are not seeing it yet, right? I just see the whiteboard. Okay, sorry. All right, let me, I've got it here. Share now. I hit share, cancel. I apologize, guys. Well, let me just, um, until I'm figuring it out, let me just get the, Give you guys the overview um and then ashley can... if you want to you can take that down and i can share it elaine if you want me to okay that would be great okay okay let me cancel it okay have you got it oh perfect okay yeah um <clears throat> So a total of, I believe if you could scroll down, please, uh, Secretary Fox, yeah, total of 610 um, participants for this quarter. Uh, we've got, if you could scroll back up, please. Um, so in March, a uh, total of two trainings. Uh, in April, three, um, which includes the BIPS program directors and facilitators, uh, as well as the advanced uh, domestic violence training. Uh, in May, again, the advanced um, the domestic violence training at uh, TSU, which was uh, in service. Uh, we had the child support and domestic violence symposium of uh, signs of abuse and how to respond uh, in Jackson, as well as another advanced uh, domestic violence training with CPS Academy. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the in June, we have the Domestic Violence Overview with Senator Tommy Burke's Academy with 42 uh, participants. That's a pretty good number. Um, and then when Councilmember uh, Miller, she went into, if you recall earlier, she went into some detail about the uh, BIPS annual conference. Uh, so great job with that, with... Um, participants of uh, 46 uh, for that. So Ashley, would you like to add anything? No, I think you covered it. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you, Secretary Fox. Of course. 
Thanks so much, um, Alana and Ashley. Appreciate your work on the committee. Uh, for uh, the Standards and Rules Committee, our chair, Sarah Davis, uh, she is currently um, uh, unavailable and not present today. Secretary Fox, did uh, Sarah send anything your way to discuss? Yes, so um, as you all know, uh, the Standards and Rules Committee is meeting, and the next meeting is slated for July 12th at 1.30. And so if you want to go through the standards and rules and look at any potential changes and suggestions, please send those to Sarah Davis and copy myself and Brooke on those. I do want to say thank you to Brooke who has been keeping up with all of those suggestions and changes. Um, but at this time, uh, that will conclude the, the report. Um, and as Stacy has acknowledged, it will be a while before we're able to solidify all of these standards and rules because uh, we want to be able to uh, keep up with the trends. And to date, uh, those rules are outdated. I've sent Brooke and Sarah a couple of changes just from the conference uh, from questions that have come up. So um, essentially, uh, that's it, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, Secretary Fox. And we're going to go ahead and move to the professional highlight section with uh, Darisha Davis. She's going to be speaking about victim services at the Board of Parole. So and before I think we do so that, much, Madam Chair, Before we do that, were you able to finish your report, the executive committee report? I know we talked about the slate of officers and got that voted. Were you able to finish up your report? Let me go back to it. Um, committee. I believe so. I know we had the. Yes. So, um, sorry, give me, give me one moment. Um, I got a little discombobulated, uh, with the, uh, moving parts. Um, we, we can allow Darisha to go ahead and then until you get caught up. Okay. There Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Jerisha Davis, the, the Director of Victim Services for Board of Parole. And today I'm just going to share with you some of the services that we provide um, to domestic violence victims and victims um, in general. Um, they're the same services uh, apply to, to, to all the victims. Um, so first and foremost, um, we recommend um, anyone that would like to um, participate in any parole hearings to uh, be registered with our office. Um, registration is confidential, so an offender would not know if someone was registered to receive any notifications on that particular offender. Um, we do have an official form that uh, victims or anyone that uh, would like to be registered that can fill out. It's um, available online at our website. Um, but that information can also be sent directly um, to myself. Um, someone could also just call or email us and say that they would like to be registered and we would um, get them registered to receive parole notifications. Um, we try to uh, facilitate the victims in wanting to navigate this um, process as much as they want to. Um, and so once someone is registered, they can receive notifications regarding an offender um, when that offender comes up for a parole hearing, any decisions from that hearing, and if that offender should be released while on parole early, they would receive release information from the Board of Parole. So once, a, once an offender does come up for, for a parole, the victim and their family member have a decision to make on whether how they would like to participate. Um, they can go to the hearing, um, participate at the hearing, at the prison or jail, or they can do so via video conference. Um, if an offender is jailed or housed, I mean, at a prison, they have the option of going to any 15 locations that are throughout the state to participate in the hearing via video conferencing. Um, utilizing this option allows them to save time to travel to um, prisons, um, it allows them to be a little bit more comfortable in terms of not having to go to a prison to be um, checked in and being in the same room as an offender 
Um, it also gives them a little bit more confidence in speaking um, on what they, you know, have to say and and um, not have a fear of being in the same room with the with the offender. So we do have that option for them. Like I said, we we now have 15 locations throughout to, throughout the state. Um, so if if anyone wanted to do that, they would have to participate um, from Tennessee. They can't participate outside of the state. Um, the other options, um, if they would like to take advantage of our letters of opposition, victim impact statements, and um, our new uh, option that we've had for two years now is the victim impact video statement. Um, letters of opposition can be mailed to us, they can be emailed to us. Uh, we do have an official form for the victim impact statement that's again um, available on our website, but it can be um, mailed to someone, it can be emailed to someone. Um, so very easy to get that um, document out, out to folks if should they need it. Um, letters of opposition are also confidential. They're not read out loud at a hearing. They are um, read before a hearing, prior to the hearing by the board member and considered um, in the board member's decision when they are deciding whether to recommend or decline an offender's parole. Um, if someone decides that they don't want to attend the hearing, this also gives them an option to do that, but they can do both. They can attend a hearing and they can also submit a letter of opposition or victim impact statement. Um, the video victim impact statement is a direct result from the Reentry Success Act. So um, at a hearing, if someone doesn't feel comfortable with speaking, um, at the actual hearing or they're just having challenges um, getting their thoughts down on paper, they can schedule to do a Teams meeting with my office and um, essentially just speak and speak their mind um, via video. Uh, these are treated just like letters of opposition or victim impact statements. They are reviewed by the board prior to the hearing and considered just like um, a written statement is. Um, these letters, or I'm sorry, these videos are um, viewed at any subsequent hearing, and they can also um, not be not be considered if um, um, someone that records them doesn't want them to be considered like at, at the next hearing. And they can also record new uh, videos if they want to for um, any subsequent hearings. Um, like I said, uh, they would just need to contact our office and have um, the Teams app downloaded on a mobile device or their computer. Um, and I just think that they have the option of recording a, a new video if they want to. Um, but again, any of these options are um, provided to them, letters of opposition, victim impact statements, attending uh, the hearings in person or via video. Um, again, all the information is kept confidential um, and, um, you know, an offender won't know that uh, a victim or their family member has written in a, let a letter of opposition. And yeah, does anyone have any questions regarding that information? No? I yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Darisha. Um, I, I work here at the AG's office in criminal appeals, and uh, I've, I've seen the very real impact um, on the with the work that you do. And thank you so much for everything you do for victims. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And if I can be, um, if anyone needs, you know, anything from me, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you all for your patience. I had some technical malfunctions over in my end. I'm going to wrap up the executive committee report um, very briefly. Uh, we did have um, all of the our committees uh, discuss the reports today. All of the updates that we had are reflected in those reports. Um, uh, for the certification and monitoring committee, um, there were two visits that we had completed with the Davidson County Sheriff's Office SAVE program, that's in person, and then 
the alternative counseling solutions, which was virtual. Uh, observations were completed, paperwork sent over to the committee, and uh, they met up to work out all of the details and to make the presentation for the general body uh, to approve. No updates with training and education for emerging issues in order of protection. We're still waiting on United States versus Rahimi. It should be coming out any, any week now, very, very soon. And so moving forward, um, the committee will address updating the order of protection form once we have that decision. The coalition also sent a request to the AOC regarding training for advocates. I know um, Secretary Fox briefly mentioned that today as well and talking um, to Michelle about the report. For uh, standards and rules, as of now, we have our upcoming meeting on uh, July 26, and we're going to discuss adding a section on investigating BIP complaints and how to proceed when necessary. Next, we have a few awards that were given out to our um, members. The Office of Family Safety awarded Stacy Miller, Regina McDevitt, and Tina Fox for their important work uh, involving victim services. So thank you all very much for all the work that you do. It, your, the award is very well deserved. Uh, we talked about the annual BIPs conference um, and uh, as Stacy mentioned, it went very, very well. Uh, we also received a BIPs complaint from the Office of Family Safety. And this is about the program Successful Survivors. The Certification and Modern Committee is going to discuss this and uh, determine whether an investigation is warranted. Uh, and thank you, Darisha, for the professional highlights. We talked about that and continuing to implement it. We've found it to be very uh, successful and it's interesting to get to know one another's line of work and how it impacts uh, domestic violence victims in Tennessee. And finally, uh, the count new council appointments, Ashley Parker and Lana Frog have both been reappointed to the council with a new expiration date of June 30th, 2028. Uh, we have not heard back about the administrative office of the courts regarding um, Judge McMillan's appointment. However, we are anticipating it. Yes, thank you, Ray. <laughs> Hopefully we'll hear about it soon. Um, and I accepted so it. Good, good. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. And um, okay, so now we uh, uh, we will have our uh, quarterly meeting. The next general body meeting will be on August second at eleven a.m. Uh, Secretary Fox, do you have additional updates and announcements for us? Yes, just want to. Um co-sign with uh, Judge McMillan. He has been reappointed for the next four years. In fact, all three, um, that's including Ashley Parker, Lena Frog, and Judge McMillan, all the paperwork has been sent over to the Secretary of State's office, and they have all the information now on their website that you all are official through June of 2028. And so uh, the next cycle, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we will have three positions um, open, um, effective July 1st of next year. That's the next cycle. And of course, we'll keep everybody posted on that. So, um, but these um, uh, committee members, um, your information is on the governor's website. Um, this information is sort of like um, a governor's appointing um, boards. And so um, this is official. Just want to make sure that everyone realizes that. And then, uh, Madam Chair, if we can, um, want to make sure that we have all the minutes from the meetings um, two weeks from today. Um, the Office of Criminal Justice uh, Programs, uh, that report is due July 15th. And so if I could have the minutes from all the committees in about two weeks, it'll be greatly appreciated. Um, and then finally, Madam Chair, we do have Takara Wilson on. We just want to uh, get her to share a little bit about what she's doing in the domestic violence field. Takara? Hey, Tina. Thanks for having me. 
So I am Takara Wilson. I am the Domestic Violence Prevention Coordinator here at the Tennessee Coalition. And I will just take up just two minutes of your time just to go over a little bit about what we're doing on the prevention side of things. Um, right now, we are working on some of our heavier lifts right now are our um, protective work environments initiative. And that's where we are able to provide training to both staff and HR and management teams um, on how to deal with when domestic violence carries over into the workplace for both um, victims as well as perpetrators of that violence. Um, we are also working on strengthening um, family supports by just sharing information about um, what it looks like to create a statewide family leave policy. And right now that's kind of in the information sharing stage of things because we are a uh, at will to work state. And then last but not least, um, we are actually partnering with the Family Justice Center with, uh, I think I saw Regina on the call. Hey, Regina. And we are working on an engaging boys and men's platform. And so with that, we're just creating safer spaces for men to be able to share their experiences with violence and how violence is affecting their everyday life and then what they're able to do about that in their communities. And so I just realized that I have another meeting to get to and apparently it's in an hour and it's gonna take me about 45 minutes to get there. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and pop off with you guys, but I am gonna add, let's see, I'm gonna add my email address to the chat. So if anyone has any prevention related questions, please reach out and someone from the prevention team, likely me, but someone from our team will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much, Takara. We really appreciate it. And we'll definitely keep in touch and let you know if we have any um, questions or updates. And uh, with that, the uh, 2024 remaining um, quarterly meeting dates include, uh, we'll, we'll be meeting September 13th and then uh, December 6th. We only have two more meetings left of this year. Does anyone have any other questions or comments about uh, this morning's meeting? All right, and just as a reminder, please, uh, all committee chairs, go ahead and send us uh, meeting minutes by Friday, June 28th, and submit them to Secretary Fox. Thanks again, everyone, for all the time uh, that you spent with us this morning and the important work you do uh, for Tennesseans. The meeting is officially adjourned at 1055. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.